Welcome to our overview of research at Prisoner Health. I am Dr. Desmond Kelly, the Interim Chief Academic Executive Officer at Prisoner Health, and I'm joined on this panel by Dr. Les Hall, who is the Chief Academic Officer for Prisoner Health in the Midlands and Dean of the University of South Carolina School of Medicine in Columbia. Dr. Marjorie Jenkins is Chief Academic Officer of Prisoner Health Upstate and she is Dean of the University of South Carolina School of Medicine in Greenville. And Dr. Windsor Sherrill is our Chief Science Officer at Prisma Health and Associate Vice President for Research at Clemson University. We are going to be discussing research at Prisma Health and sharing with you information about our research infrastructure, the activities of research here at Prisma Health which is focused on improving the state of health in South Carolina. Research is highly valued by Prisma Health, and we have developed and built an infrastructure to support that that is robust and expanding. We have a broad group of researchers. You might ask, who are the researchers? That starts with our patients. We have actually over 2,800 patients enrolled in research studies. We have excellent clinicians who are curious about improving the delivery of healthcare to our patients. We have medical and healthcare trainees and academic partners and investigators at our university academic partners that you will be hearing more about during this presentation. Prisma Health is one of only 102 academic health centers in the country, and our research is focused on prevention, promotion of health, and delivery of healthcare services with less of an emphasis on basic science research. We are about improving the health of our population. We have built an infrastructure to support research here, and we encourage you and all of our team members to be curious, to ask those questions about how can I improve health? How can I make this experience better for this patient that I'm interacting with? And how can I improve the well being of this patient and his or her family and all of the population that we serve? I am going to now hand over to Dr. Les Hall to discuss research as it relates to improving healthcare delivery, quality, safety, patient experience. Thank you, Des. I appreciate the fact that Prisma Health has put a great emphasis on the importance of improving care uh, using both patient safety and continuous learning with a commitment to continuous improvement. One of the champions of quality improvement in healthcare in the country over the last few decades has been Dr. Don Berwick. And he famously said that all of us come to work with two jobs, which is to take care of the patient we're seeing today in the best way we can, but also to create even better ways of providing care in the future. And I think what we're doing with our Pulse program and other initiatives in Prisma Health right now are really in the spirit of that attitude. Both research and quality improvement are intended to improve care. Research is a systematic process of using the scientific method to create new knowledge that will benefit communities or individual patients. A quality improvement is really about how do we take that knowledge that is created from research and get it to the bedside or into the communities where it's making a difference today. We don't always have a great track record in healthcare of implementing findings of research quickly or effectively throughout the entire area of service. And sometimes it takes years and years for those effects to actually become common practice. And so quality improvement is one of the tools that can help to accelerate that process of ensuring we're offering the best care at the right time to the right individuals. One of the models that helps to conceptualize that is the quadruple aim. We're trying to improve the quality of care from the patient's perspective. We're trying to make sure that the patient outcomes are actually improving as well. We're trying to do that in a way that is cost effective because resources are not limitless. And fourthly, we're trying to do that while honoring the healthcare providers who are actually doing that improvement and contributing to their wellness and their joy and work at the same time. There's an old adage in quality improvement that every system is perfectly designed to get the results that it gets. And when you look at any healthcare system, you'll find some things that are doing extremely well where we're hitting our targets. You'll find other things in every healthcare system where we have goals to be at a certain level of performance and there's a gap 
and where we currently are and where we want to be, and then we have to decide how do we close that gap. Some healthcare systems will ask us to work harder or will say, you need to care more about this. They may even replace people. And throughout the last several years, as healthcare systems have tried to bring about improvement in closing those gaps, those often don't work well because the reality is the majority of those gaps are due to process issues. There are processes that are not optimized. And if we ask our health system workers to help us identify those. And if we ask our patients to help identify what's not optimized for them, they often can point us toward things where they've been working heroically to overcome things that weren't particularly optimal, but yet there are real opportunities to make those things work better. We are asking for transparency. We're asking for input on a regular basis from our patients and from our health system partners to try to help us understand where there are opportunities to make that better. And then we're making that commitment to continuous learning as a learning organization that leads to continuous improvement. That's the package that will get us to the point that we aspire to where we're not only being effective in our work, but we are looked to as a positive example of a health system that's really effective in what they're trying to do at a national level. One of the things I love about Prisma Health is that we involve trainees in our quality improvement projects. We have over 8,000 learners that walk through the halls of Prisma Health at some point during the year. That's a lot of people and many of them are touching patients while they're here. They're involved in the patient care process and many of them are going to become part of the workforce of Prisma Health in the future. It makes sense to involve them in our quality improvement efforts and most health sciences curriculums actually want them learning health system science or system-based practice as part of their learning as well. We also know that the data shows that if we do not model the correct behavior for those trainees, we are actually potentially adversely affecting their performance as a healthcare professional once they leave. If you are in a system that provides high cost care, meaning that the average cost per patient is higher than expected, but without an improvement in outcomes, 20 years later, you're more likely to be delivering high cost care than if you were in a system that did not have that outcome. If you're in a system that has high number of adverse patient events that are potentially preventable, it impacts your risk of having a high risk practice in terms of adverse events in the future. So we kind of all know intuitively that people watch what we do and not what we say, but it's a real opportunity and an obligation for us, I think, to model the kind of behavior for our trainees who are training within our healthcare system so that they actually build the right patterns into their life's work from the very onset of their health profession's education. The last thing I would say about the importance of quality improvement to our system is every healthcare system is trying to figure out, well, how do we save money? Fortunately, unlike some things in healthcare, you don't have to spend a lot of money to improve your healthcare systems. In fact, it usually has the opposite effect. Just think about the example of an operating room that may have problems with patient flow or getting the right equipment there at the right time for the right case or room turnover is not optimized. That's the most expensive real estate in most cities is the real estate in the operating room and if you can optimize that flow everybody wins the patient wins the providers win the chief financial officer is happy because we're no longer wasting resources and that's a typical scenario in quality improvement when we make systems work better everybody wins and that's why i think it's such an important focus for us as a healthcare system right now thank you dr hall for that's an excellent discussion and example Dr. Jenkins, would you please discuss and share with us the types of research performed at Prisma Health? Yes. So we have uh, several types of research at Prisma Health. We know, as Dr. Hall stated, that research really elevates an organization. It helps us to find the right way to do things, to do things better, to deliver care at lower cost, to increase access for our patients. And as Dr. Kelly said, we are working at Prisma Health to develop a better state of health for South Carolinians. So we have translational research and translational research Research means that we take research from the lab and we make that continuum to the bedside. As you think about a scientist in a lab with white coats and assistants and looking under a microscope, but then taking what they find and applying it into that clinical setting to find answers for patients and for the community. And at medical schools, we tend to have PhD scientists that are performing bench research and translational research and they partner with clinicians 
to perform translational research. And we do that here at Prisma Health. We have 1,100 clinical physicians here that are also clinical faculty at the medical school and partner with our PhD scientists and teach our students to perform research. And then let's talk about clinical trials. You've probably heard about National Institutes of Health. That's a $49 billion budget that promotes discovery research at the bench in the laboratory. They fund translational research and also clinical research and community research. And the NIH actually gives us a lot of information that we can utilize to ask the second question or the third question. Prisma Health has over 1,000 clinical trials ongoing within the health system, and most of these are industry-sponsored. And what that means is pharmaceutical companies and organizations are trying to develop innovative therapeutics and devices and better ways to do procedures so that they can bring that to market. So that's the difference between federally funded research and industry-sponsored research. Industry-sponsored is working to get that to market. And the National Institutes of Health is funding multiple billions of dollars of research around the U.S. and globally every year. And then one that is near and dear to my heart is community-based participatory research. That is where we go out into our communities and we engage our nonprofit organizations and other organizations and our citizens to help us create the research questions. What do you want to know? What do you think we should be studying? And also create the process so we can enroll patients in these trials and we can find answers for a healthier community. And last, I will talk about applied research. Applied research is when we take our knowledge and we apply it to real world problems today. And I think that's really where the rubber meets the road for us in improving care with research. And that research can involve existing knowledge, it can involve utilization of new products, and Prisma Health is a vibrant environment for applied research. Applied research within Prisma Health and the healthcare system, and also applied research to help create healthier communities. So Dr. Kelly, that is our types of research. Thank you very much. That's a great overview, and I think just that gives a sense of the, the broad range of research uh, here at Prisma Health and the opportunities for those of you who are curious to become involved in research. And we'll tell you more, you'll learn more about how to get started. Our clinicians are busy. Our healthcare providers primary role is in treating patients and improving health. They have those research questions on their minds, but without the collaboration with our academic investigators and our academic partner universities, it is difficult for them to really formulate those research questions, to complete the studies, to get the funding that they might need in order to do that, and then to get those findings out to the public. I ask Dr. Windsor Sherrill to discuss more about our academic partners and the range of support that we have from them. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. As Dr. Kelly has said, there are just a few academic health centers in our country. And indeed, Prisma Health is a very unique academic health center. We've got decades old, very strong partnerships between Prisma and the university partners. USC, Clemson, and Furman are critical partners. The relationships that we have in place are those that facilitate impactful research, applied health research, facilitating both formally and informally. This is so important to the university partners. For the universities, Prisma Health is the clinical research environment. This is the place where our faculty and our students connect to patients and the delivery system. And likewise for Prisma, partnership with the university provides access to unique research methods and research expertise of academic faculty. But we know that although the goals of the universities and the health systems are complementary, they're not identical. The health system has to focus on day-to-day -day clinical operations. The university faculty are more focused often on educational programming and research funding. So our goal is to work together to make those goals and missions synergistic so that our collaborative research together elevates each entity. 
One of the most important tools we've used here at Prisma Health in partnership with the universities is what we call embedded scholarship. For the past few years, we've been very intentional at the universities in developing models of embedded scholarship, programs like faculty fellowships, sabbaticals, recruiting postdoctoral scholars and research faculty to work within the clinical system, to be based within the clinical system so that their research ideas are informed by clinical needs. Their research questions are the questions we need to answer to transform care. We're working together between Prisma and the universities to develop a new kind of health researcher. One who again understands the delivery system. One whose work and health research is informed by the delivery system. On the health system side, we're working on specific tools and processes to facilitate this important work. Providing our faculty with access to data and administrative support for their research. Our goal is to facilitate transformative health research. The tools that will enable this are partnerships between what we call clinically informed researchers and research informed clinicians. And as research leaders, we wanna support the important work of both groups. What faculty care about is that their research makes a difference. What clinicians care about is better care for their patients. With research partnerships between Prisma Health and our universities, we're engaged in facilitating the kind of translational research that makes a difference in our state. We do think that we're a very unique academic health system here at Prisma, and we're committing to leveraging the work of both our academicians, our faculty researchers, as well as our clinical researchers. Our collaborative health research, the scholarship we achieve together, makes a difference for our state, and then we can achieve more together than we can achieve as individual organizations. Thank you, Dr. Cheryl, and thank you to all of our panel members. I think that you have, uh, and I hope that you have learned more about the breadth of research, the types of research, and the importance of research. And Prisma Health recognizes that and has invested in research. So we have offices of research support to help those engaged in clinical trials, to provide the data support that Dr. Cheryl mentioned in assisting our investigators, focusing their research question, developing methodology that's gonna help them answer that question, accessing the data in order to address that question, and then analyzing that data and arriving at those answers that we then will share internally. We are very much about implementing, as Dr. Jenkins talked about, applied research. Our goal is improving the delivery of healthcare and the health of our patients. So our research findings, we really focus on implementing those improvements and those innovations as soon as possible, as well as sharing our findings nationally and improving our own reputation of Prisma Health as an excellent place both to have access to cutting edge medications, maybe through clinical trials, as well as those experiences and that healthcare delivery that's going to improve their health. There is a type of research called comparative effectiveness research. That's where we're asking, are we providing the right treatment to the right patient at the right time? Population health and community-based participatory research really focused on improving wellness and well-being and preventing diseases and addressing the challenges faced by patients who have chronic health conditions. And a really important focus is a patient-centered outcome. And we are very fortunate in the resource that we have to have access to the patient engagement studio housed and supported through our medical schools that really engage patients right at the front end and in that research. Because after all, it's not for us to tell patients what we think they need. We need to hear that from them and then to engage them and to answer those questions to improve their experience and to improve the quality and the safety of that experience. So we hope that you will be interested in learning more. We have a robust website, and I'm sure you will have the link to that website that talks more about our research offices, about research development activities, and about investments. And I'm gonna mention one development is our seed grant programs. Every year we fund, and the most recent year, over $600,000 for small seed grants that are designed to 
engage a prisoner health clinician with an academic partner, as Dr. Cheryl described, in addressing a research question that is aligned with the priorities of the health system, as we have discussed earlier. And many of those projects have gone on to both change healthcare delivery at Prisma Health and to secure external funding to enable larger research projects. So lots going on, and I would just encourage you to be curious to learn more about research at Prisma Health. And in closing, I'd ask our panel members if they have any pearls that they'd like to share to add to this discussion. Well, uh, you know, I'd like to share that Prisma as the largest integrated healthcare delivery system in South Carolina actually gives us great opportunity to be national thought leaders in how to deliver high quality care at a lower cost and to increase access. We want to get answers to those issues and those diseases that are causing high morbidity and mortality for South Carolinians, things such as cancer heart disease and stroke. Outcomes of research like that, which is being performed at Prisma, will help us find these answers. It will help us take better care of our communities. It will help us answer those questions for even a national, as a national example. And I think that research ensures that we provide evidence-based care to our patients on a daily basis so we don't leave patient care to chance. We actually have evidence that tell us what is the best treatment, the best device, the best procedure to offer to patients at the time they are needed. I also do want to just add around clinical trials. I mentioned a thousand clinical trials are ongoing at Prisma, but we also are in a state that is rich in diversity and we need diversity in clinical trials because clinical trials gives us answers for the population that is studied. And in South Carolina, being such a diverse state and Prisma taking care of such a diverse patient population, we are thinking about diversity at the front end of our clinical trials so that we can ensure the answers that we find out will be applicable to all of South Carolinians. Thank you, Dr. Kelly. Thank you, that's such an important point. Dr. Kelly encouraged folks to be curious to get engaged in research at Prisma. And Dr. Jenkins mentioned that we are the largest integrated delivery system in the state of South Carolina. But we're also small enough where any researcher, any student, medical student or resident can become engaged in impactful research. So as we said today, we're trying to design those programs and support the administrative structures to facilitate your work. And we welcome your work as we work together with the university and the health system to change health outcomes through research and scholarship. Well, I've always been a fan of research, but I must admit that this last year, the importance became more personal to me when I had a family member who was diagnosed with cancer and the treatment she received was based upon research that had been done over the last five years and produced dramatically different outcomes than would have been possible before that research was done. Ultimately, that's the motivation for research. Research saves lives, it improves quality of lives, it reinvents the future for people who did not know if they even had a future before that research was done. If that doesn't get you up in the morning excited <laughs> to be involved in this work, I'm not sure what will. It really made it come home to me to have somebody that I cared about so deeply in my own family benefit from the new knowledge that had been gained through research that it made me even more enthusiastic about supporting research going forward in the future. Wow, thank you, Dr. Hall. I think you get a sense of our passion and energy around research and we encourage you to join us on this journey. Thank you.